So welcome back to the shop, everybody. So in today's video, we're gonna cover installing a generator transfer switch. Now I wanna go ahead and let y'all know, in this episode, not only are we gonna cover generator transfer switch hookup, but there's a ton of poorly done videos I've seen online, and most do not cover 110 volt hookup. What if you have a 110 volt generator? So we're gonna cover hooking up to a 110 volt generator today, as well as a solar power generator, and we're gonna go over and cover the basics for hooking up to a 240 volt generator. The good news is you can do both with one box. If you get to reading online, it gets very confusing and you think that you need a specialized 110 volt transfer switch just to go to a 110 volt generator. Those are very hard to find and they're actually more expensive than the 240 volt version. We're also gonna cover in this episode all the different plugs and adapters that you'll actually need to go from 110 to the 240 right here. So sit back, relax, we've got you covered. There's a lot to cover in this episode, a lot that I did not see covered in a ton of other videos. And we're gonna install this, show you how to do all that as well. Now, before we dig into it, I do wanna say, if you're not comfortable with electricity, especially 240 volt and 110 volt wiring, you need to hire an electrician. There's my disclaimer right there. So for starters, what the heck is a generator transfer switch and why do you need one? Well, this box right here actually wires into your main breaker panel and it has three-way switches on them right here. And what that means is whenever you hook your generator up to this, well, you can either have a switch flipped in a certain position that it's working off of grid power, your everyday power, or you can flip it to an off position or flip that same switch over and now you're running off of your generator, your external power source. So what this means is you're not back feeding the panel. You're either running on one or the other. So that keeps you legal for one. And that also keeps the lineman safe. Whenever people back feed panels without proper interlocks or transfer switches. What you're essentially doing, if you forget to throw that main breaker off, you're now back feeding the, the transformer, the power lines. You're putting the workers that are out there at risk, the linemen, they're trying to get your power back. You're putting them at electrical hazard and risk. And again, well, that's just illegal too. So I'll make another video on the differences between transfer switches and basic generator interlocks. I have one at my house and uh, we'll cover the differences there. All right, for starters, we are going to pop the covers off here. Take these screws out of the front and I should mention this particular kit. See this cover right here? Comes to where you can install your generator plug right here. It also comes with an exterior box. So technically you could leave this plate in here run wires out to this box and it does the same exact thing. This is where you would plug your generator in. So if you have a gas powered generator and you want the exhaust and fumes outdoors, well, you can just run basically an extension cord, so to speak, or cable from here to this box to power it up. What these two are right here, because you have, this is a 240 volt box, you can do basically 220 volt phases in. These read wattage and let you know your phases. So now you can see if you have one side of the box or the other or one side of your generator phase overloaded. So this particular box comes with four 15 amp, 120 volt breakers, and then one that's connected together for 240 volt service. So if you had something like a big well pump or some sort of 240 volt appliance you wanna run inside. But that requires that you power this with a larger generator that supplies 240 volts. We're gonna cover both today. Now the cool thing about this is if you're doing 110 volts only and you need more than four circuits, you can actually spin this right here, rotate it this direction, and eventually you'll start seeing this little bar coming out. So if you were to take that bar out of the middle, you would take this from flipping two at the same time, which is 220 volts or 240 volts, and you could take them back to individual breakers just like this, and you could wind up with 620 volt circuits. So let's talk some basics on wiring real quick before we hook this up. I really wanna cover the 110 volt side because, well, a lot of people are not giving that information online. Okay, so if we zoom in right here, this is your power, your input to feed the box. So I'm going to take this plug out right here and install it in the box. And as you can see, there's four connectors inside of this plug. This is your typical 240 volt generator plug. Well, four connectors here, four wires here. What we have going on in your typical wiring is white for neutral. That's a common neutral between both your hots. You have green for ground and then you have a black hot. This is your typical 120 volt hookup right here. So if we want to supply this with 240 volts, you can see we have an extra wire, a red wire. 
This is your second phase, 120 volt phase. So now you would have two hots right here. Your black, you're adding the red. They share a common neutral. And then here's your ground. Now, if you look on the back side of these breakers, you can see black is feeding three breakers. Red is feeding the other three. So if you hook up standard 240 volts and put power to both these wires, all circuits are working as they should. So what happens if you have a 120 volt generator that only has three wire hookups? We have ground, we have white for neutral, and there's that black power wire hookup I told you. But as you can see, we're not sending power to that red wire because, well, this is not a 240 volt generator. You can buy a plug just like this that actually has a jumper built inside. You can see it's three wires from the generator, four wires out right here. The jumper actually sends hot to that red and black wire that I showed you inside that box. So this plug right here just took care of the problem for us. We don't have to do any extra wiring inside of the panel to run on a 120 volt generator right here or a standard 240 volt generator. And your generator may have one of these plugs right here. This is called an L530 hookup. It's very common or your generator may have a TT30P hookup. But the good news is these adapters are very easily had online to do all the jumpering for you. So have no fear, I will list all this down in the description based on the most common size generator plugs that you see on 120 volts. But long story short, we want to allow a very cheap adapter here with heavy 10 gauge wiring to do the crossover on the inside and basically convert us out uh, to two hots instead of a single traditional hot. That way we can leave our generator transfer switch wired up as intended for 240 volt service. The beauty about doing this is should you upgrade generators down the road or have multiple generators like we do, you can wheel a 240 volt generator right over this transfer switch, fire it up. You can use that 240 volt breaker in there to power a 240 volt appliance in the house if you want. And you can roll that right back out, roll your 100 20 volt generator up there and power things in your house such as freezers, refrigerators, window units, things such as that. Whew, that was a mouthful, but hopefully you learned something right there. Let's go dive into the main 200 amp panel out here in the shop. It'll be the same as what you have inside your home. This is where I need to install my transfer switch and I'll show you how the power comes in, how we wire this into the circuits that we want to power up out here. All right, so here is my main 200 amp panel out here in the shop. And again, this is just an easier way to show y'all you'll have something very similar in your house. So first and foremost, we wanna kill the main power before we open this up at all. So let's go ahead and throw the main 200 amp breaker off. All right, now that our panel is open, let's talk about something very quickly. Make sure you're nice and safe here. Even though we have just thrown the breaker off, what that has essentially done is killed all of the bars that feed these breakers down here. You need to understand that the power coming in from the power company right here is still hot. Now you can see I have protective plastic covers over everything, but if you were to somehow not have those covers or get a finger or tool back in behind that plastic, you could be electrocuted. Now, everything coming out of these breakers is essentially dead, but I always suggest grab a multimeter and check and make for sure that you have no power. So again, you could run the wires right out the backside of this plug, basically extend them over to here and mount this anywhere you'd like outside. Or you can mount the plug right here in the front of the box, which is what I want to do. I really love that this kit gives you the option to do that because not everybody is going to mount their plug outside. A lot of people will do this like in a garage or somewhere else. All right, so we'll take our plug out and get it installed right over here. All right, so this might be a little difficult to show working in a tight space here in the dark but I decided about my box right here because I like my breakers to be up to where I can easily reach and see them. I don't want them way down on the ground. This would be a good time to mention too, you may be looking at this box going, hey, what if I have my panel inside and there's a sheetrock wall? Well, Reliance also makes ones that can flush mount into sheetrock. I just happened to get one that's gonna mount on an external post because I knew that's what I had. So it'll be the same wiring and hookup, but you can get a flush mount one. Okay, so something I just realized, this is awesome, another nice touch from Reliance. All the wires are labeled. 
A, B, C, D, E. So we technically don't have to leave none of this out. We can go ahead and install all this. Okay, this loom, metal loom was provided. So now we can slide it over all the wiring and then we can clamp it in with the provided clamp underneath. And one last note to make, all of the red wires have a warning before we covered up here that says connect red wire leads to branch circuit breakers. So these will actually go to the circuit breakers themselves. All right, so I'm gonna loosely figure out where this wire loom terminates and pretend my clamp's on there and see which knockout I wanna use. I mean, I could go to that one. That actually looks like a decent one. So we'll go to this knockout right here. Now, if you're not familiar with knockouts, it's just like the name sounds. You actually, well, knock the tab out. This is a relatively large connector right here, so there is an additional ring right here that we can also pull out. Now we can feed our wires through to the inside. Again, we'll make sure they don't wind up poking in anything they shouldn't. And as you're bringing them through, go ahead and put this lock nut over the wires and just bring everything on through. I'd always like to leave my wires a bit long in case I want to move stuff. And yeah, I've got a little bit of a mess going on in this panel. So I'm going to tuck them over here on the side. And I've got all these open spaces right here. I am going to strip these wires back and feed the neutral and ground coming from the transfer switch into that bar right there since everything's bonded. All right, so I'll find an open slot in this bar. I've got a ton of them. And then we will hook up the ground coming from the transfer switch. Always tug and make sure your wires have a good solid connection. So you have a red D and a black D. You have a red C and a black C. Now we're talking strictly if you wanna hook up that 240 volt circuit over here. So take a look right here on the front, C and D for the connected 240 volts. I am not installing 240 volts today because I'm setting all this up for a 120 volt generator, but should you provide 240 volts here from the generator, you can wire up, say, a well pump or whatever you want right here. Let me show you how to do that real quick. So right here, for example, is, well, it's a 240 volt breaker. You can see it's double poles. They're both together. There is a black wire right there and a white wire. We're sending 120 volts down one side, 120 volts down the other. Say if that was my well pump, for example, what you would do is bring in the red. Well, we'll take these wires out. The red goes into the breaker here the black, which is your line out, you'll put a twist nut on this wire to this wire, set them off to the side. Now your power is feeding back through this 120 volts to one side of the breaker. But because it's 240 volts, now we have an extra wire. You would technically take this other red, go into that side of the breaker, take the wire out of the breaker that's going out to just say the well pump and do the same thing again wire nutted onto this other D black wire. So you've got 120 volts in, 120 volts out, 120 volts in, 120 volts out. That gives you 240 volts. Okay, so I just showed you how to hook up 240 volts. It's basically just like hooking up two breakers that I'm about to show you. So A, it's a single 15 amp, 120 volt breaker. So what I've did is I found wires A, black A and red A. I've looped them over. There is an extremely important circuit in here that I am wanting to do all this for. So I know that this breaker right here is what feeds our storm shelter. So in the event of a power outage, say we're stuck in our storm shelter and a hurricane hits, this is the main one that I want backup generator source going to. So let me show you how we're gonna hook this up. Right now, that black wire coming out of this breaker is sending 120 volts out to my storm shelter. The other side of that wire, the ground and neutrals hooked up to the neutral bar. So here is my red. Remember I showed you that warning. It said all reds coming in from the transfer switch you need to hook up to your breaker. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This red is going right 
into that breaker that we just removed the wire from. So now the wire that's feeding our circuit, my storm shelter, for example, the receptacles and all out there, doesn't have any power. That's where we take the black A coming from the transfer box, strip it off, and we connect these two together. Put this off to the side and you're done. So let me see if I can explain this to where it makes sense. So we are now using the same breaker that's labeled storm shelter, sending power out and into this circuit breaker right here. And don't forget this is a three position circuit breaker. You've got line side, off, and generator. So what that means is if I flip this down, power is now running through that red wire through this circuit breaker, back out the black wire, and feeding the circuit just like normal. It's still getting power right from here. If I flip this switch to the middle, well, it's off. I've just broken that. I've interrupted the flow going back and forth between these two wires. All right, so if I plug my generator in and I've got power going to this box and I flip to up, now this circuit breaker just took power from the input side of the generator and is sending back out this black wire, out to the circuit. It's, it has completely eliminated this circuit breaker and red wire right here. So what this box is allowing is power in either here or power in via from the grid or shore power. Okay, I'm gonna throw everything to the off position. Let's test this out. We'll throw the main breaker back on and I don't have lights, which is what I expect because I'm in the off position here. Let's go to line power for the lights. They just kicked on. I don't know if y'all could see that there. So we already know B is working correctly. Let's go ahead and hook a generator up and see what's going on. All right, so to all my normal viewers, I'm giving you a very awesome sneak peek of some stuff that's coming this year. I told y'all I had big plans. This here is the EcoFlow Delta Pro. This is the baddest portable power station, solar generator, whatever you want to call them, that they make. 3,600 watts, continuous, over 7,000 peak. This thing can run just about anything I need it to out here. As far as 120 volts go, this covers it all day long. So don't worry, we have a couple of very special videos coming up for this and another spoiler alert. The biggest request I had bar none in 2022 from viewers was why aren't you doing solar? You need to start doing solar. This right here is the start of a huge series for the year that I literally have no idea where it's gonna lead us to, but we're doing that in 2023. As crazy as the world's getting with rolling blackouts and freezes and hurricanes and everything else, uh, it's time to start getting prepared for backup power. And with that said, nothing is probably better for extended power outages than solar. So guess what? We're going solar this year. We have a lot coming up on the channel. Okay, so for starters, this has a heavy duty 30 amp, 120 volt output. So what we're gonna do right here is take this plug I was telling you about, plug it in, and the plug does the automatic conversion for me to four wire hookup, the same exact hookup that transfer switch has. So I'm gonna take this wire, by the way, this uh, extension cord was provided in that Reliance kit, which is awesome, because they're not cheap. Twist lock that in, now we have the proper connection for our transfer switch. All right, now we're gonna get our wire hooked up. All right, so now we have our 120 volt output turned on. And here's what should happen. Let's go ahead and test this. We have lights. B is hooked up to grid power. If I throw it to the middle, lights just turned off. Now, if I throw it to the up position, assuming we're wired correctly, we are powered up off of the generator. Let's see what happens. Check that out. We got it. All right, we're powered up and surprisingly, wow, those lights are pulling 400 and 37 watts. Would have never thought that. These are supposedly rated so much less than that. That's very interesting finding that out. All right, so the other very important test, let's flip A up to generator. This is my storm shelter. This is very important. So the other awesome thing about that EcoFlow Delta Pro right there is 
I can literally plug it into the wall outlet and it does pass through on it. So it'll take the outlet wall power, pass it through the machine, and I can have the transfer switch running off of it, but it's technically running off a of wall power, if that makes sense. And that machine right there offers a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply, basically a battery backup like you do for a computer and everything else, except it's on steroids. So what that means is my wife and I and our dogs, we can be out here if we know a hurricane's coming and about to hit, we can have that Delta Pro at full power, plugged into the wall, powering this technically off of grid power. And as soon as the storm hits and we're out here nice and safe, if we lose power, that right there immediately swaps over to its battery bank and you never know you even lost power. No, we, we don't have to get out of the shelter. There's no risk of nothing getting hit by the storm. And we're immediately then on a major backup power source. That's awesome, that's amazing. All right, I haven't come out here in a while. Let's see what kind of critters have made our storm shelter home. By the way, an entire build on the channel. This is all a custom built storm shelter I did myself. Big thick steel doors. Believe it or not, this is a wooden storm shelter, but it's six inch thick solid wood walls. So you can see I run another huge power supply out here, but now I technically no longer have to do that. So let's see, do we have power? We do. I even have a window unit out here for extended stays through a hurricane with a big steel door that'll go down to protect us. Obviously, that EcoFlow shouldn't have a problem kicking on an air conditioning. So, that's amazing. We can be literally trapping ourselves in the midst of a storm and we have basically have an automatic generator that kicks on, ready to go. It produces no emissions, no fumes inside you can see the importance of a well a transfer switch and a backup power supply like that in this situation so say we're trapped out there for six seven eight hours and the storm's on us and we've been without power for a while what about all of my food and everything else that i have stored over here it'd be nice to know that out there everything just automatically kicked over for us food freezer everything is now on this power running that machine has tons of power to run a freezer or refrigerator so let's see if we're wired up correctly for that that was the other circuit that i wired up so let's go over here to e flip that to generator and let's see if we have power we do all right so let's make sure cool we got power we got light everything's good to go so hopefully i just showed you here that with this transfer switch or ones like it you can hook up to 240 volt generator or 120 volt generator with the same box no issue at all the only thing i want to caution you on if you're going to run off of a smaller 120 volt generator you don't want to load all the circuits up with heavy drawing appliances because you're just going to overload the generator itself now keep in mind the box we installed today is rated for 7500 watts of input uh, which is your kind of mid-sized 240 volt generator they make bigger boxes if you happen to have a very large generator all right all the links are going to be down in the description for everything and for the people that's been just chanting, go solar, go do all this stuff. We have some awesome videos coming up, a whole series on this stuff. Like I said, I don't know where it's gonna take us. So the EcoFlow Delta Pro, I've actually been testing it for a while. It's gonna get us official release video here coming up very soon. You're gonna wanna watch that. This thing is, this thing's insane and it's expandable. You're just seeing one piece of it. That's what gets really exciting. All right, we'll catch you on the next video. I hope you learned something. Take care.